Hey guys, today I'm sharing with you my top picks for my favorite um, art supplies for 2017. So lots of watercolor stuff. This was the year of art journaling. I've art journaled this year more than I have probably in all the years before that combined. So I've been really, really loving art journaling, mostly with watercolors. So I'm going to show you my favorite watercolors, art journals, pens, brushes. Let's get to it! Okay, I'm going to start with watercolors. And in the last few months, I would definitely say that I have fallen back in love with uh, Schmincke's pan watercolors. And I show this uh, palette in a separate video. I will link you to that. And the box, um, I got questions about it. So this uh, beautiful, beautiful tin uh, I got from a, a set that was a set of watercolors that was uh, really fast, um, like discontinued. So I'm, I'm sorry you can't get this uh, exact tin. But if you wanted, you could spray paint uh, a regular tin. So this is just what I keep my paints in. And not everything here is Schmincke, but I just find them to be, and I'm talking about the uh, the pans, even though um, when, I think when I run out of the colors here, I'll probably get a tube just because it's so much more economical. I'm not sure, but the pans themselves, <laughs> the Schmincke pans are just so luscious and I don't know, once I got, like, once I got back to using them, I kind of just didn't really feel like using uh, my other beloved paints. And um, I still use other brands. Also in this palette, I have a couple of Sennelier paints and a few Daniel Smith ones. But once I get um, painting, I always... <laughs> find that I enjoy the um, the like texture I don't know if that's the right the consistency of the Schmincke paints they are just gorgeous and that has been my one go-to art journaling um, supply in the last month hands down no competition However, I do want to mention a couple of other favorites this year, and I have a few reviews on my channel, so you can check them out. I'm just uh, mentioning here things that um, I really enjoyed this year. So I have here one of the Prima tins, and the Prima sets, I think now they have like five or six sets, and each uh, one of these uh, sets, it looks like this, and then it comes inside with 12 half pans. Um, what I have here, as you can see, is a bit more than 12 half pans. What I have here are the colors that I chose from both the Classics and the Tropicals set. And uh, each one of those sets is a good basic set, but I think together, you, if you combine them, um, you really get uh, a great selection of colors. Now, the Prima paints... Um, they are a little bit uh, mysterious, <laughs> meaning that Prima doesn't, um, as far as I know, they don't tell you which pigments are in their paints and how light fast they are and all that. Um, so keep that in mind. You know, with Schmincke, there is no question about it. All the information is there. This is top of the line. Artist grade paint. Um, you know what you're getting and the quality is just amazing. With the Prima paints, however, they are really affordable. You can find the classics and the tropical sets. Um, I think now they cost each one of the sets like $14, $15, something like that on Amazon last time I checked. And you get this cute tin also. So if you buy two sets, you'll have uh, two tins. And it's small, it's affordable. Uh, the paints are very vivid and intense. Uh, they flow really nicely. And I just think it's a really nice, you know, smaller palette to have. Um, yeah. 
And these are my White Knights paints, the St. Petersburg White Knights. Uh, I think now they're just called White Knights. This is the 36 um, whole pan or full pan uh, set. So as you can see, these are half pans, these are half pans, and then these are full pans. And these, this set, uh, I made some adjustment to it. I um, got some extra colors. Um, I still think, whenever I start painting th with them, I fall back in love with them. I still think this is the best, um, you know, value for money that you can get. And I have videos on this uh, palette. As you can see, it's huge. So, you know, if space is an issue or if you want to be more portable, then obviously something like this makes more sense. But if you have the space and you kind of want to have one set that has great quality and will last you many, many years, I think the White Knights is a brilliant choice. Oh, and I just want to mention about this palette that this one is completely custom made. So you can't buy this as it is. Um, I just collected the colors and I have a video showing exactly which colors I included in my custom palette. So let's move on to brushes. And these are just the ones that I found myself using over and over and over again. And these are the um, Skoda Perla or Perla <laughs> line. And um, they are round synthetic brushes. They are extremely affordable and um, a great deal, um, in my opinion, is this set. You can buy these three as a set. Um, it's the Joseph... I'm not going to pronounce his name because I can't pronounce that. <laughs> so you can buy these three in a set and this is the number 12. A travel number 10, which is uh, a great uh, travel brush size and then a number eight and this one I actually had before I got this set and this is the number 14 and I use all of these all the time um, you can see that they are you know when they uh, come they're pure white and obviously they got stained from I uh, from the paint but you can see that they're um, that they're pretty intact. Maybe this one, I've had this the longest, and maybe a few hairs are, um, no, they just look great, and trust me when I tell you, um, these have uh, substantial mileage on them. So, yeah, I, I really love using them. And for me, for art journaling, for doing kind of very loose portraits and florals and all that, uh, I find these, uh, they're not the softest. Uh, you know, they have something like this one. This is the Versatile uh, line from Escoda or the Neptune, uh, the Princeton Neptune ones, the round ones. They are softer uh, than these, but I find these have... Uh, just the perfect uh, give for me for most most of my projects so it's just that's what I've been you know grabbing when I am painting so that's what I'm recommending to you um, let's move on to some pens and pencils some staples uh, this year in my art journaling I discovered thanks to Mindy Lacefield these Stabilo uh, pencils and these are water soluble. So there's the black one and then there's the graphite one. And I've been using the graphite one mostly. The black is very intense. And once you wet it, you know, it spreads around. So it depends, you know, there's no better or worse here. It just depends on what you like. But I have been loving these uh, pencils. Pens. My favorite pens this year to use in my art journaling were um, the Uniball Air Micro, looks like this, and the tip is um, quite fine, I would say. 
my camera wants to focus. So that's the tip. That's one. And then this one is the Otto Feud Ball, which I've shown in many other videos. And this one is uh, broader, has a broader tip than the other one. Sorry, my camera is not cooperating today. There. So it's a broader tip. And both of these are water resistant, waterproof. So I don't have to think about, you know, using them with watercolors and having them smear all over the place. Having said that, I sometimes do like it when they smear. So it just depends, um, you know, what you want. But then I kind of find that I, if I want to smear things, then I use my um, Stabilo pencil. But yeah, these are great um, and yeah, they're great to use with uh, watercolors because they are uh, because they are waterproof. Um, now moving on to white markers or white pens. This is always a tricky one. I loved the um, Signo Uniball Broad white pens. Um, really, really loved them got two of them and after a certain point while they were still you know full of ink they just stopped working and yeah so while they were working they were amazing um, but then they stopped working and I couldn't get them to work again so that's a little bit disappointing but the, these the Posca pens they are not as fine as the Uniball and they're not as opaque but they are reliable and they lasted me a long long time before I had to buy another one and um, I just find found these to be the most reliable and uh, also have a nice uh, opaque white um, yeah paint in them so these are um, this is acrylic paint pen as far as I know so I have here this one is the 3M bullet shaped and looks like this and then this one is the finer one and yeah this one I haven't used as much as the other one but this one uh, served me really really well so white pens and then pencils I loved using pencils this year and I'll show you obviously I have more but I'll show you just a few of my favorites so uh, I have two kinds of pencils that I use uh, often and so one type are the watercolor pencils and these of course are you know watercolor in pencil form and when you wet them they react and these are just um, my two uh, brands that I use are the Prima ones and the Fabel Castell um, Albrecht Durer pencils. Um, both are fantastic. What I like about the um, the Fabel Castell ones are that you can um, you can buy it open stock, so you don't need to buy a set which in my case most likely will help colors that I won't use you can just pick the colors that you like and the Prima sets are um, I think they're pretty affordable I think they're a good deal the colors are lovely they only come in sets and um, there are repeats between the sets so if you get all the sets you'll have um, repeats of certain pencils uh, both good choices and I really really enjoyed playing with them in my art journal the second kind of pencils that I like to use are just you know regular coloring pencil wax based or oil based and my favorite this year were um, I really liked using the um, like neon pencils and I have a set from Holbein uh, I have a few uh, pencils from Holbein um, but I know they are hard to find so Prismacolor also has some neon colors so this is the pink one from Prismacolor and then these are from Holbein um, they are both fantastic and um, 
I I got my whole binds sent to me from Japan because I'm fortunate enough to have a friend living in Japan. Um, but I know the Prisma colors are kind of widely available, especially in the States, and you can find them in the major art stores uh, in open stock. In Europe, it becomes a little bit more difficult, I think, and what is mostly available in Europe, um, you know, in art stores when you go actually to a um, an actual art store, you'll probably find everywhere the... Um, the Faber-Castell Polychromos and they're a good option too I have to admit I like the Holbein and Prisma a little bit better I think they're a bit um, like creamier and softer and just I don't know I just enjoy using them more but the Polychromos are an excellent choice again you can uh, buy them open stock so just get a couple see if you like them get your favorite colors and then uh, you can get some more and or you can gradually grow your collection without breaking the bank and buying one set. So these are pencils. Um, I also enjoyed playing with these Neo Color 2. I've had these for years and years. Um, so these are wax um, crayons. It's water soluble wax pastel. So um, again, they're really fun for art journaling and uh, with the Neo Color 2, they come in sets, but they also come open stock, and I just find that to be just more. Um, that works better for me because I have very specific colors that I like to use. I don't tend to use neutrals or browns or grays or greens too much. So anything that comes open stock is um, just makes life a bit easier for me, and I don't buy things I'm. Um, not so likely to use. Uh, I love these. I tried the Dina Wakely ones. I have them. I have a video comparing them. I prefer these. And so these are by Karen Dash and they're called Neo Color 2. And last but definitely not least, uh, journals. This was the year of watercolor paper art journals for me. And I finished two Jane Davenport ones, and I also finished this journal, which I uh, I have a video um, on my channel. So, all in all, uh, I have to say that while I love what I love about the Jane journals, um, I love that the outside is white um, and that it has this lovely canvas. Um, cover and you can paint it well you can also paint this but this just has a beautiful cover and I love the size but when it comes to the paper I'm gonna have to say that I prefer this journal now this is the Stillman and Burn beta series a4 hardcover journal I messed this up I need to paint this so obviously you can just you can paint this also but this is kind of like a leather type uh, black binding, a little bit boring to me. I really prefer the, the white one, but um, I think the paper is better. That's what I think. <laughs> I think this paper, I prefer it to uh, the paper in Jane's journal. Um, I think it buckles less. I'll show you. So these are all, you know, covered in watercolor and it stays completely smooth and then with Jane's journal um, look at that so the other side is painted and then this is I mean you can see how it buckles and this really I mean look at the difference it does a little bit um, I don't think you'll find uh, a paper unless it's like super super thick but I think this paper is, is I'm not going to say it's better, but I, I prefer it. So, and the other great thing about the Stillman and Burn journals, they have different kinds of papers, thinner papers, rougher papers, smoother papers, um, ivory paper. This is the white one. And they come in a huge variety of sizes, different covers. 
Um, so this is another one. This is a soft cover and this is actually from the Alpha series, um, which is, it's still textured paper and it's still watercolor. I mean, it can handle watercolor, but it's thinner. So if you feel a little bit intimidated by the super thick, um, extra thick paper, uh, from the beta series, you might consider trying the alpha series. As you can see, it does buckle uh, more than the thicker paper, but it still handles watercolor beautifully. And, you know, if you do a lot of sketching and you don't want to get too fancy, you don't want to be intimidated by your journals, um, then maybe the alpha ones or maybe the soft cover is more for you because it's a little bit uh, less intimidating. Um, I love the beta series and I just, uh, I think it's fantastic. So for our journals with watercolor paper, I haven't tried the Strathmore, so I can't um, tell you if I like that one, but um, the Stillman and Burn, um, journals are excellent so i hope you enjoyed this video please leave me a comment below and tell me what you've been loving uh this year maybe i'll get some ideas or if you want me to you know review something or you have some recommendations you want me to try stuff um yeah i'm happy to hear from you so thanks for watching